Okay, so here is uh, Thomas uh, Jones, who's uh, currently doing a master's uh, with myself, looking at the effects of uh, dietary interventions on blood vessel health. So Thomas has been using the FMD technique uh, over the last uh, 12 months. Now, Thomas, how have you found applying the flow mediated dilatation technique to your research? Um, it's a very interesting technique, and it took uh, me and my research colleague two months, I think, to properly learn the technique and become competent in it. But it's it's a technique that you can enjoy um, doing it, and and it's, it's an interesting one as well when you read the literature and know the science behind the technique, yeah. Okay. okay, so what kind of tips could you give to somebody who's a beginner at the moment who's embarking on this journey to learn this technique? Um, as I said, it took about two months for me um, to practice and to get the skill, the skills that I needed to do this assessment. So I would say that practice is probably key, and just try try and get um, one or two scans a day in. Um, it's good if you can complete the full procedure as as practice, but if you can just scan for ten minutes or so anyway, I think the more confidence that you have with the probe, um, it definitely helps you perform the technique. Excellent. All the best with your studies, Thomas. Now, this is Gabriella, who is currently learning the flow media to dilatation technique to use in a future research study. Now, Gabriella, tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that you've had, uh, you know, trying to practice and learn this technique as a, as a beginner. Uh, well, the technique's quite difficult to learn at start. Uh, you have to get used to using it, and it it's can feel a little bit alien, but you just need to keep on practicing and just spend lots and lots of time on it. Um, and make sure you don't leave too long between practices as well. Or you'll lose all the all the sort of benefits that you got beforehand. Okay, so when you become an expert in the technique, how do you hope to apply uh, the technique in your future research? Uh, so I'm hoping to use this technique uh, in using some hypoxia research. So using an altitude chamber, and we'll be looking at the blood vessel function in altitude and how altitude affects that and whether that's related to what happens in the brain when you're at altitude as well. Excellent. Sounds very interesting and it seems that it's going to be applicable to a lot of people. I'll be looking forward to seeing the findings.